are used to the idea that American intelligence services, such as the National Security Agency, have enormous capacities to track our phone calls, emails, and movements, and we hope that rational and constitutional rules for their use are set by our elected leaders. But our guest, journalist John Fassman, says most of us don't realize that thousands of police departments across the country also have access to some really powerful surveillance tools with relatively little oversight. Portable gadgets called stingrays that electronically mimic a cell phone tower and get every mobile phone within range to yield its data. And cameras, cameras everywhere, increasingly with facial recognition software. Also in the United States, we're seeing the use of automatic license plate readers. Just describe what these things are, how big they are, who uses them, what they do. They log the geospatial data, so where the car was and what time it was observed. And it just goes into a it goes into a database. Then this essentially lets police put together a very granular, sort of detailed roster of where you go and when you go and who you see. You also write about another device. This is something I had never heard of. Uh, the, the, I guess the the trade name is Stingray for this thing. It's a device that can simulate a cell phone tower, so that when you're driving by it, your cell phone thinks it's a mobile phone tower con and connects with, it, connects with it, what happens then? Well, once your phone connects with one of these things, the, the, the trade name is Stingray. The technical term is MC Catcher. MC stands for International Mobile Subscriber Information. Every mobile phone has a unique number, and it's that number that identifies itself to the cell phone tower to let the tower know that, hey, this is, you know, Dave Davies' phone, so if you have any messages or texts for Dave Davies, send it to this phone. And MC Catcher Stingray mimics a cell phone tower, and it gets your phone to connect to it. And what happens then is that all of the metadata on your phone, that is the non-voice call data, can then be read. And that includes text you might send, websites you might browse, uh, who you called, and how long you talked for, even without knowing the actual substance of the conversation, all of that sort of thing connects to the phone. Um, the data from every other phone in that area is hoovered up. Okay, but when they scoop up all this other data about hundreds or thousands of other cell phones, does that get retained? Do we know? We don't know for sure. It could get retained. It could get thrown away. Another thing you write about is the use of algorithms by courts and police departments. You also write about a technology called uh, Shot Spotter. Tell us about this. ShotSpotter is an acoustic sensor designed to detect the sound of gunshots. And these, I saw this, these in place in, in Newark, New Jersey. They often look like uh, little white diamonds or rectangles up on traffic light poles. And they're trained to recognize what ShotSpotter calls loud, impulsive sounds of between 120 and 160 decibels. When it does hear such a sound, it sends an alert to the ShotSpotter headquarters where a human listens to it. Police have something called Citizen Virtual Patrol. You want to explain what this is, how it works? Sure. The Citizen Virtual Patrol is a network of cameras placed throughout the city. So these are public cameras. Now, one of the things when you talk about CCTV cameras, the overwhelming majority of them are privately owned. The overwhelming majority of them are privately owned. Um, but these, the Citizen Virtual Patrol is a network composed of, of, of publicly owned cameras that people can access from a laptop. And it is not just available to police departments. It is, or it was at some point, available to investors and some private citizens as well who track people and observe people all the time. John Fassman, thank you so much for speaking with us. My pleasure.